We've got this chunk of aluminum, and we're gonna make another triangle that fits right inside here. This shock here is off of a off a Suzuki Jixer, and so the simplest thing to do if I'm trying to make linkage that fits inside here that uses a bearing that will work inside here is to get the bearings used on the same bike. That's these guys right here. This guy right here is the inside race. This one turns inside the outside race here. These are a needle bearing. If you can see inside there, little needle bearings. The plan is we're going, we're going to mark out our pattern here with our three points for the triangle, drill these, drill this out, and then shape this into a triangle, and then we're going to put our bearings inside here. Now this is where things went wrong. See, I did make an aluminum triangle with bearings embedded in it, but it turns out our drill press platform, this guy right here, this round part, is not perfectly level. So when I'm drilling an item through here, the thing I'm drilling is slightly off, which is not a big deal when it's a thin, flat piece of metal because it makes really no difference in the outcome of the product. But when it's a thick piece of metal in which the, the straightness of the holes is pivotal to the outcome, then we got a problem. Like this is the piece I actually made and discarded because the holes, when I actually drilled them through here, like they look here, when you're looking at them with your naked eye like this way, they look perfectly straight. But when you insert the bearings, they're just, the holes, they're, they're off just slightly at an angle. And all of them are off at this weird angle where it's a dimension here and it's also a dimension there that they're off just a little bit and so the result is that this if you would actually install it with the bearings this thing instead of being perfectly straight like this it would be like that so this doesn't work can't use this at all so i had to order another piece of aluminum and this time i took it straight to the machine shop and it was done the same day it cost me 85 dollars but whew, Boy, was that worth it. I got my shiny, newly machined piece of aluminum block here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ream these holes out to reach my interference fit. I'm on a website right now called The Engineer's Edge. And I'm on here because it has information on what's called an interference fit for the bearing. The bearings have to be slightly bigger than the hole they're going in so that they have a tight fit so they don't fall out. So my question is how big does that hole have to be in comparison to the bearing in order for this to work? They have a chart for interference fits for bearings. Interference maximum and minimum fits, basically that's the difference between the two size holes between the bearing and the hole that it goes into. The maximum difference should be two thousandths of an inch and the minimum difference should be four ten thousandths of an inch. So I've got my adjustable reamer here and my first thing is to adjust this all the way down to, uh, to its smallest setting, which means moving these blades as far down here as possible. This reamer goes from 15 sixteenths to one and one sixteenth. Now I've got the blades pushed all the way up here. So at its lowest setting, which is where it is now, it should be at 15 sixteenths or a little bit under. And these holes are 15 sixteenths and my bearing is supposed to fit in here like so and it's still got plenty of room there. So we'll move forward and go ahead and ream these holes out a bit. So that means adjusting this is a little bit at a time until we get to the point that starts to make contact with this guy. So like that. So like this guy, you can see now it is starting to make contact there. So now we can go ahead and ream this hole out. Make it just a little bit bigger. So my bearing is currently at four or five on the dial here. 
our hole for the bearing is at 44. We're ready to press the bearing in. This one, this one feels a little bit tighter than that one. So I'm gonna pop that out. I'm gonna go ahead and ream this guy again. I'm gonna change the reamer just the slightest amount. Go ahead and get this guy too. Try putting this guy back in. That's nice. Once I had my bearings sized appropriately, I went ahead and pushed them back out of the aluminum piece by simply taking a piece of pipe that is bigger than the diameter of the hole here, fitting that over on one side like so, and then on the other side, using a long socket that is approximately the same size as the outer race diameter, and putting both of these into the vise, pushing the socket in, and pushing the bearing out of the aluminum into the pipe over here. All right, so I want the same general shape, this triangle shape that I had before on this guy. And so I'm just gonna transfer this guy over onto here like that, and then I'll trace this guy out. There's my outline. Now it's time to cut it. All right, now I've got this guy chunked out here. Now it's off to the sander to fine tune it. All right, I've now got my aluminum all triangulated out, shaped out the way I want it. So the next part is to put the bearings in here. All right, well there we have it. My nice finished linkage piece, which I think I'm pretty happy with it. We'll see, I gotta test it, make sure everything winds up. So the way I'm doing that is very simple. I'm gonna, I've already got this piece that is a bracket piece that goes, that fits onto, onto my triangle and then attaches the triangle to the frame. So this very nicely though, has these two pieces of flat sock on here and if I bolt it on here, I can tell if these holes are straight or not. <laughs> So that one is really straight. Let's check the other ones. All right, I think we're good here. So that's the story of one part of the suspension linkage. It costs, in total, $157. Basically, there was $85 for the machining of the holes. There was the aluminum itself, the block itself was $12. The end. And what was else? The bearings are not cheap either. The bearings were $60. So in total, $157. But in my mind, money well spent because this is a custom precision suspension piece. So $157, not too bad. I am very happy with how this worked out. So that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Keep on wrenching, and we'll see you next time.